trying to recover from Hurricane Ida. Ida was a Category 1 hurricane when it hit Nicaragua on Thursday. 500 homes were damaged as well as roads, bridges, and even public buildings. Now it's beginning to move away out of the Caribbean, entering the Gulf of Mexico. So that poses um, some fears, I think, out here for some of us. Anywhere from Louisiana all the way over towards the Emerald Coast. We'll give you an update with the latest on Hurricane Ida. We're still talking about a Category 2 storm moving off towards the north northwest around 12 miles per hour, headed towards the Gulf Coast. There's a look at the uh, circulation, at least at this hour, where uh, at least a few areas, maybe a few light showers. One of those would be Key West, Florida. Beyond that, all of the rain with this system is still contained offshore. Of course, uh, Louisiana picking up some showers right now. All that is part of another disturbance in the northwest gulf and you can actually see that on the wide shot there this system uh, at least ida is going to be combining uh, with that uh, non-tropical area of low pressure in the western gulf to kind of just uh, really intensify the rainfall especially once we get into the uh, late monday and uh, even uh, tuesday for the most part time frame across much of the southeast there's a look at uh, at least the uh, current forecast fan keeping it at around the uh, category two strength for at least until around this time tomorrow then we should see some weakening prior to landfall right now the current ex expectation Expectations are right around a category one, if not a tropical storm makes landfall. Currently, the National Hurricane Center does have this at a Category 1, and we do have some uh, hurricane warnings in effect uh, from uh, Pascagoula, Mississippi to Indian Pass, Florida, and that, of course, uh, means that we expect the potential for hurricane conditions in that area. We're from Jacksonville hours. down into Miami are anywhere from 20 up towards 25 miles an hour sustained, and they will stay like that through the day today and into tomorrow. Now, of course, Ida, when it does come ashore, will bring some gusty winds here. Right now, the winds are at 80 miles an hour when it comes to Ida, and that is a Category 1. So we could see winds here sustained up to, say, around 50 miles an hour. That could take down some tree limbs and some power lines as well. It's not only wind we have to worry about, but also the rain. Now, the heaviest rain band is about 70 miles off to our south. That bright red indicates very heavy rain. So how much are we going to see? Well, here in Pensacola, we could see a month's worth of rain. We average about four and a half inches of rain. We could see that. and We don't need any more rain because all the way since August, we've been above average on rainfall. Two inches in August, up to seven inches above average in October. Taking pictures. Okay, no, yeah, no one on the pier, Mike, but there are some people taking pictures. There's a lady right here with a camera and a gentleman uh, as well walking on the beach. Those are the only two people I've seen so far. Folks are a little curious that before, uh, before landfall, they always are. Uh, Steph, appreciate it. Thank you very yeah. much. We're going to get back to Steph here in sure. just a minute. But uh, joining us all morning long here on Your Weather Today is our hurricane expert, Dr. Steve Lyons. Now, when you look at what's going to be happening um, with a pretty uh, broad area, there's a 49 mile per hour wind, so a lot of tropical storm winds there, and those will move on shore, we're pretty certain, and that could cause some power outages. So the inland impact here uh, would be the uh, power outages is uh, fairly close to the coast. And then, of course, the other big one, of course, is the rainfall, and that rain could be uh, significant along the frontal boundary that's currently capturing the circulation. And uh, for some reason, there we go. And you can see at near the landfall point, three to five inches with a big Gulf of Mexico area. heading northbound to the Gulf Coast in question. And in fact, we've got live team coverage of Tropical Storm Ida. Stephanie Abrams joins us from Pensacola Beach, Florida. And Julie Martin is live in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. But let's get that first look at Ida right now. And again, the storm is now a tropical storm. It is moving off to the north-northwest pretty rapidly at about 17 miles an hour. And the wind's now 70 miles an hour. So it's uh, not nearly what it was yesterday. It was actually up to a Category 2 hurricane for a time, now weakening rapidly as it's been taking in drier air. So this is not going to be a very intense storm as it comes on board. But there are going to be very gusty winds, winds certainly gusting to 40 and 50 miles an hour. That may be enough to bring down some tree branches and some power lines in some areas. Northwest Florida getting back into southern Alabama, southern Mississippi. And there is your projected path. It's going to be nearing the coast here later today, probably coming on board very late tonight into the early Tuesday hours. when we expect landfall on the Gulf Coast. Well, we're fortunate that Ida has weakened, but that hasn't taken away completely the threats of rainfall and storm surge. And at this stage, we're still looking at the possibility of three to six inches of rain, perhaps as much as eight locally, eight inches of rain, and a storm surge that will raise water levels to perhaps three to five feet above ground. Mr. Rappaport, what particular areas at this point, I know the forecast changes a lot. This is uh, what we love and hate about tropical meteorology sometimes. What are some of the areas that you're most concerned about right now as far as some of that coastal flooding and maybe inland flooding? 
The areas for flooding that we're anticipating are going to be mainly to the east of where the center comes ashore. And at this point, we're thinking the center, which is located here now, will turn more towards the north-northeast over the next 12 to 24 hours. That will mean most of the rain and most of the surge will come ashore from there eastward. However, there will still be some rainfall and that's spread inland. And there is a risk for rainfall totals of three to five inches inland as well. Now, it's semantics a lot of times when we talk about it being a tropical storm, tropical depression, extra tropical entity, that sort of a thing. Uh, we just always like to remind people that even with weak tropical systems, uh, rainfall can be enormous. I remember Allison from several, several years ago in and around the Houston area where we picked up anywhere from 20 to 30 inches of rain. Maybe if you could talk to the folks at home about why, even with a, a weakening system, uh, rain can still be a huge problem, a dangerous P problem. Possibility for some flooding. Florida and Julie Martin is live in Bay St. Louis, Mississippi. But first, let's get a quick check on where Ida is right now, Carl. Well, again, we've got a tropical storm here. It's not nearly the storm that it was yesterday. It's been taking in some drier air, and it's not very well formed. Now pretty rapidly moving off to the north-northwest at about 17 miles an hour. And there still is some gusty wind. If you look at some of the buoys here, one of them not that far from that low-level center picking up a wind, sustained wind of 45 miles an hour. So that's that wind that's going to be coming on into, uh, say, southern parts of Alabama and northwest Florida later today through the afternoon and certainly getting into the evening hours and uh, being transferred down by this large area of showers here. You see some of that heavier rain as some of those bands begin to come on in. That's when we'll get that gusty wind. A lot of very heavy rain here, too. We're talking about several inches of rain potentially in northwest Florida. That's going to lift up through Alabama and into Georgia. So again, the panhandle of Florida, as well as parts of southern Alabama, eventually pushing towards Atlanta. And as we look at some of the winds here, much stronger over water. You're a little closer to the center of circulation, plus you don't have as much friction. These winds, though, we do expect to pick up even over land before all is said and done. And as we zoom out, we can see that much of the southeast dry, but that will all be changing here over the coming days. You can Let's see the rain somewhere. glistening off of my jacket here, and then you get this wind, which is gusting 20, 25, 30 miles an hour. Hey, it feels kind of cold out here at times. So it's yeah, it's an anomaly, that's for sure, but I guess that's a tropical system here in November. Tell you what, we've got some other video to show you that we shot during the daylight hours. Let's show you what Orange Beach looked like. And again, there was some boarding up in the area, uh, but mostly it was, uh, you know, this is the off season, obviously. There aren't very many tourists here at all, but uh, a lot of the locals are battening down the hatches here and really a little bit concerned maybe about some beach overwash in a few spots and maybe some locally heavy rain, but hoping that this would blow through pretty quickly. And that includes a lot of the, uh, the boat owners, and we talked to one of them a little bit earlier today. Yeah, our winds are still uh, northeast, east-northeast, and it's still uh, blowing the water, but I'm checking, uh, the, you can't see it out here because it's dark, but th the beach, which is not very wide here, is still pretty much exposed. I have not seen much of a water rise here. Now over Waveland on the coast, they've had a water rise between three and a half and four feet. Also checking Pascagoula, which is over on the other side of the uh, state of Mississippi, closer to where you are, the uh, uh, wave action and the water rise two feet. Highest winds now offshore, Pascagoula, Jim, 35 miles an hour, gusting to 44. Northeast wind in Pascagoula, too. So we're going to watch that this evening to see if this thing is finally going to get over to Highway 90. Jim?